Hey everybody, this is PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery Outdoors here on a super warm November day to tell you about Hoyt's new hunting lineup. And the bow I'm gonna to talk to you about is the brand new VTM 34. There's also a 31 inch available, but this is the 34, that's the one that I shot. Awesome new bow from Hoyt. This is the third generation of what they started out with the Ventum. So VTM, you can see the play there from the name Ventum. This is the third generation. They've made some tweaks to the bows every year. Great new bow this year, 34 inches. That's my wheelhouse, I love that length. So I'll tell you all about the VTM bows, but first, let's get the specs. The Hoyt VTM 34 measures 34 inches axle to axle. It's got an IBO speed rating of 334 feet per second. The brace height is six and one quarter inches. The bow is gonna weigh 4.8 pounds. The total draw length range is gonna be 26 inches to 31 inches across two different cams. There's gonna be two let off options of 80 or 85% and it's gonna be available in peak draw weights of 40, 50, 60, 65, 70, and 80 pounds. The Hoyt VTM 31 measures 31 inches axle to axle. It's got an IBO speed rating of 342 feet per second. The brace height is six inches. The bow's gonna weigh 4.65 pounds. The total draw length range across two different cams is going to be from 25 to 30 inches. Let off is going to be either 80 or 85 percent, and it's going to be available in peak draw weights of 40, 50, 60, 65, 70, and 80 pounds. All right, so as I mentioned, I have the VTM. 34 here. That's what I set up to shoot. And we should mention, you know, Hoyt always has aluminum and carbon. So the RX-7 was the bow they came out with last year. And what Hoyt found, the dealers, Hoyt dealers were telling him, this bow is so popular, please don't change it, that for 2023, Hoyt's bringing back the RX-7. They're just going to keep that same bow for their carbon flagships. So, but aluminum, that's what the VTM, that's where they live. And again, I have the 34 right here. So Hoyt first came out with the Ventum in 2021. Then last year, they made some tweaks to the Ventum Pro. No, most notably, they came out with a new cam, the HBX Pro. They have maintained that cam for the VTM 34. And what the chief differences between last year's bow and this year's bow is last year we had the Ventum Pro 30 and the Ventum Pro 33. This year we have the VTM 31 and the VTM 34. A lot of the other features of the bows are the same, but they do have different um, axle to axle measurements. So, you know, now they've got something to, no matter what size bow you like, there's an option there for you. Uh, but they did make some improvements to the VTM lineup. And what the Hoyt engineers were telling me is that as the, a bow progresses, that's what they do. They make little tweaks uh, to fine tune the way the bow performs. And Hoyt has the last couple of years spent a lot of time improving the shooter experience. I give them huge props for, for that because I would say, you know, going back six, seven, eight years, I was not necessarily a big fan of the Hoyt bows. My complaint was the um, let off. It always just felt like there wasn't a very good valley there. It always wanted to pull my shoulder forward. And it had what I called Hoyt hand shock. If you shot a bunch of bows in a line there, you were just going to feel the most hand shock from Hoyt. Well, that's what they've worked on in killing that. I mean, they have just knocked that hand shock down to almost nothing now. It's like a lot of the other bows, virtually no hand shock there. And we have that nice valley at the back end. Uh, so with the HBX Pro Cam, what you're gonna have is a rotating module. That's gonna be what you're gonna do for adjusting draw length. And there are two cam sizes. That's how they get that whole range of draw length. They don't just have one module for the whole thing. They have two different cams. What the two cam sizes does, it, it optimizes performance 
at the lower end and the upper end. If you just had one cam, the lower, the shortest draw lengths, the performance, that's where it would suffer the most. So by making two different sizes, they kind of optimize the performance across all the draw lengths. Um, now, right on the top here, you're gonna see a little Allen screw there that allows you to adjust this let off. You can adjust it between 85% and 80%. You know, 80%, if you want a little more holding weight at that back end, you can just pull this stop out and that's gonna give you more holding weight, less let off. I tend to like a lot of let off that I can get comfortable at the back end. So 85% is what I like. And there is a nice valley. It's not like you come back and it dumps off and it still wants to pull your shoulder forward. There is a comfort zone there where you're in that back wall to where you can get comfortable, you know, take your aim and you're not worrying about the bow pulling forward. The draw stop right here, this does come around and contact the cable. So it is a cable stop, which is a little bit of a cushion. It's not as firm and as solid as a limb stop. It does give you a little bit of cushion, um, which is great for activating the shot. You know, allows you to pull through a little bit more rather than having a limb stop where you get back and it's a brick wall and there's not really much more you can do. Um, so just a little bit of give there. Coming down the riser. So this is another place where Hoyt made some adjustments this year. And unless you held la last year's Ventum Pro up against this year's VTM, you're not really gonna notice the differences. But what they did is they changed the cutouts. They changed the cutouts to deal with stiffness and twisting. And what Hoyt found was that when the riser twists a certain way, it actually increases the amount of noise that it gives out. So what this bow, one of the accomplishments of this bow over last year's bow is that it is quieter. Hoyt, obviously the engineers, they go through measurements and they say it's 30% quieter than last year's. So I definitely did notice when I shot it how quiet this bow is. And what the engineers are saying is that some of these cutouts that they made allowed that to happen. Now there are some unique cutouts though that serve dual purposes. It also helps with stiffness and twisting. So one of the unique cutouts you're gonna notice is right here above the grip. You can see this cutout, this serves two purposes. This is a cutout that they made again in their, in their quest to have you know, the stiffest riser with the least twisting um, for best shot performance. Uh, but this one also, Hoyt does a lot of work with the folks at Garmin. So if you run one of the Garmin Zero sites, whether you run it off the side or the Picatinny mount in the front, you know there's a cable that comes down and you would have to wind the cable around so that you would have a trigger right on the front here. This is where you press it. The Garmin Zero A1i, what that is, it's a range finding bow sight. So it's a bow sight, you press the button, and as you look through the sight, it gives you the range as well. So Hoyt working with them, they just wanted to help out with the cable management. Because as I said, there's a cable that comes down from the sight and ends up being attached right there. So it's at your finger to press when you're at full draw, you can get the distance. So what that cutout allows uh, you to do is if you're shooting that Garmin Zero, you can bring the cord out the front here and attach it to the front of the grip rather than bringing it around the side. So just a cleaner, uh, more efficient way of handling the cord for those folks who shoot the Garmin sights. And as we just mentioned, you know, I might as well go into it, the Picatinny mount, we do still have that cut out in the bow here. You can see I've got the Excel landslide with the Picatinny mount right on there. And this is, if you know about Picatinny mounts, this is a super stable, repeatable position for your sight. You know, if you put a bow sight on using these screws, there can be some variation from putting it on and taking it off. There can be some movement. With the Picatinny mount, that doesn't happen. The bar here slides into the cutouts on the riser. If you, as long as you get it in the right slot every time, your sight is not gonna move. It's gonna be in the exact same spot, so that allows you to take it off and put it back on. Of course, there are the standard 
uh, sight mount holes on the side here. If you don't want to go with the Picatinny mount, you do have those as well. Coming down to the rest, same thing. You've got your standard burger hole in the center there if you want to mount a traditional rest with an arm off the side. Hoyt does have the dovetail cut into the back so you can use an integrate style rest, which is what I have. I have the QAD integrate mounted on there. Now, you'll notice with this QAD integrate, if you've ever put uh, a drop away rest onto one of Hoyt's bows with the tech riser, the tech riser are those risers that have this uh, bar across the back here, which helps with rigidity. If you've ever put a drop away on, on some of these bows, you know, you run the cord around the outside and then into the down cable, there can be contact here between the cord and the bow riser. So Hoyt decided to give a little cutout here. They put a cutout right there and you can run your um, drop away rest cord down through that hole rather than bringing it around the side of the tech riser. Continuing something they started with the Ventum, of course you do have your short stop stabilizer and this does have vibration dampening material in it. Of course, they have this stabilizer position down here, which, you know, you just have this tiny little stabilizer attached to it, but with it sticking this far out in front of the riser, it's about the equivalent of about a six to eight inch stabilizer anyway, but yet it's only, you know, about three inches long or so with the weights attached there. Uh, but it does help with that vibration. Uh, helps to quiet it down and gets some weight down low, very low, to help that bow stand up um, straight. As well, right next to it, you have a vibration dampener. And this one, like last year, where it's connected is right where the limbs are connected to the riser. So vibration coming off the limbs. It's gonna come in and come into the riser and then they have a dampener right there at that point to attack it before it can get up to your hand. You are gonna get uh, limb dampeners as well, uh, bottom and top. Hoyt has had them for a couple years. Again, more of just that vibration dampening. And of course we do have the vital point grip. This is a different angle of grip for Hoyt. Last year they changed it. Uh, it used to be a little bit, what um, professional hunters and target archers told them was they wanted them to make the grip a little more straight. Uh, Hoyt grips in the past were a little bit more angled so that the bottom of the grip stuck out more this way back towards your hand. So they just made it more straight. And what it was is they cut down about four degrees off of that grip to straighten it out a little more. It's just more comfortable in your hand, very repeatable. The material on the vital point grip, this is nice. Of course, it's not cold out here today, but if it were, this would feel super warm to your hand. Uh, just a nice grip, good position for it. It's got some nice flare outs right in the right spot, right in the meaty part of your hand where you want some stability. They give it to you with this grip. One of the things that Hoyt has been doing um, is working to streamline accessories. You know, I have the Integrate Rest mounted on here. I have the Picatinny mounted sight that takes things off the side of the bow. They have now, they have a series of quivers long quivers, there's a two-piece quiver, you know, with the attaching points here and down here. You can get a detachable uh, quiver, it's a long one, that's called the stretch, or you can get a two-piece quiver. Western hunters, you know, you're not take, putting quivers on and taking them off like tree stand hunters. Um, so they do have a two-piece quiver that is long. You know, it's gonna have the hood up top here and then the arrow grippers down low. The more you can stretch those out, the more stable it holds arrows. So Hoyt does have uh, their quiver line that does that. 
And again, those are designed to press tight against the bow. We're working to make these bows as slim as possible, which helps with the balance. What we don't like is when those bows wanna tip over this way and you have to counteract that uh, in some fashion. So their accessories, they are building them and designing features in the bow so that they can so that everything can be streamlined. That's something Hoyt has done within the last couple of years as well, and you'll find it on the VTM. All right, so you might be wondering, hey, how come Hoyt doesn't have a bushing off the back for a side rod connection? We see that on a lot of bows. Of course, you can always run that connection point off the front and angle a side rod back. But again, in the interest of streamlining things, Hoyt decided to come out with its own side rod connection, which would go right here, and that is the SL side rod mount. And essentially, side rod connection mounts consists of two parts. You're gonna have one plate that sits this way, and then you're gonna have a connection point that sits like this, so that your side rod can move in and out, um, in and out and up and down, and then it's connected to the bar. Well, the SL side rod mount just bolts straight into this hole here. So essentially, you're eliminating that flat plate, that horizontal plate. That allowed them to save some weight and again, streamlining. That's we wanna get everything streamlined on these bows so you can connect a side rod with that Hoyt mount uh, and eliminate some weight there. All right, so for shooting the VTM 34, that's the one that I set up and shot, you know, 34 inches, that's my favorite length for bows. I just like those uh, longer axle to axle bows. I feel they aim better for me. I can hold them better. You know, if you're a tree stand or ground line hunter and you don't like that extra length, there's the 31. You can choose that one as well. But for me, I set up and shot the 34. Everything about this, as I said, uh, you know, I'm just always floored at how much I think Hoyt has improved the shooter experience. They certainly have improved it for me compared to several years ago. Um, and this bow, the draw cycle um, is, I will say on the aggressive side, um, you start to draw back, it takes some effort at the front end you, you pull through the middle and then there is a noticeable hump that you're gonna get over before the cam rolls over. You know, sometimes with bows, there's just an initial push at the front end and then it just relaxes till you come back. This one, you're gonna have that effort at the front end and then you're gonna have another noticeable effort at the back end. That's not anything, it's not a problem, it's not difficult to draw, but you will notice that. Um, you will notice those two different effort points in the draw cycle. But it is fast, I could tell that right away. This thing spits them out there, my pin gaps were tight. There it is. So the noise, you know, Hoyt said they were working to quiet their bows down. Um, I definitely did notice that. I can't say that I noticed it was quieter than last year's bow, I just noticed that it was a quiet bow. Quiet shooting bow, of course bow hunters, that's what we want. VTM 34. Again, I just like how this bow draws, holds, and shoots. It does all of those things well. It, you know, it didn't take me anything to set this up to tune it. Put the rest on, 13 16 got my knock height, shot a bullet hole. The thing shoots laser beams out here. Um, and it holds well. I don't even have a stabilizer. I usually like a stabilizer on a bow. I just went with the short stop just to see how it felt. And it did hold nice. I was able to hold it steady. I was able to hold it vertical. It doesn't want to tip one way or the other, just having the sight up here. So just a nice shooting experience. Again, I can see where Hoyt has made those improvements in the shooting experience. They definitely have done it with the VTM lineup. All right, so that is the Hoyt VTM 34. Great new bow for 2023 from the folks at Hoyt. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that bell to get notifications whenever we put out new videos. As always, if you have any questions, you can visit us at LancasterArchery.com.